Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing well. In this video, I want to discuss a very, very important topic. This is a significant topic. It is heavy. It is big. It is something that you have to meditate on it and possibly ask help from Allah by doing it doubly and a singly to, uh, and I'm talking about performing Salah, so that Allah will guide you, just like He guided me and taught me this concept, and I was of the ignorant ones uh, before He did that. It is heavy. I it has been difficult for me to make this video, and I have put it up for quite a long time. But what you are going to hear is something that no one else has discussed before. It's something that Allah taught me. And made me understand. So I'm sharing this with you. It's a burden. It's just a fire that burns from inside. And I just I cannot uh, ignore it. And I cannot just not share it with you. Um, with everyone anymore. But uh, but so I just what I'm going to ask you. Uh, regardless of what you believe in. If you are a Sunni. If you are a Shia. If you are a Quranian, uh, I, I, whatever sect or that you believe in, whatever it is, you're, if you are a Christian, if you are a Jew, stay with me until the end of this video. Listen to this. Listen to this. It is going to open your mind to a lot of things that are happening and why some of those things are happening. So, um, uh, and then make your decision. Then ask Allah for guidance and make your decision. Don't be like those who blindly follow the religion of their fathers. Don't be like those. Allah has given us the example in the Quran. Don't blindly follow your fathers. Listen, think, meditate, and ponder, and do research, and, and follow what is right. But uh, the conversation is about Allahu Akbar. It's something that you hear a lot. M m traditional Muslims use it all the time before saying prayers. Basically, they say Allahu Akbar. It's whenever they are going to war, they say Allahu Akbar. You have seen the images of people going to war, unfortunately blowing themselves up saying this Allahu Akbar or killing other people saying it. You have seen the videos. But I just want to discuss this um and also sometimes doing, regardless, I just, the point is that this is a very, very common term, and all of you know. So we're going to discuss that, we're going to analyze that, we're going to see what it means, and, um, and, and just learn more about it. So again, this is a heavy topic. I know some of you might think that, oh, this guy is crazy. That's fine. But I want you to think about this. You have to learn this. So let's get started without further ado. So Allahu Akbar, what does it mean? So basically what it means is saying that Allah is Akbar, right? So I'm not talking about, we get to the point of what Akbar means. So basically means Allah is Akbar. So the question is, what is Akbar, right? So this is what we want to get to. So what is Akbar here? So Akbar means greater, right? In Quran, it's actually used to compare two things. And in Arabic is Akbar or Min, uh, greater than. It's something is greater than something else. In Quran it is used, we are going to look at all those verses, that is something, this thing is greater than something else. So um, uh, so, Allah, so, so basically the common belief it mean, is that it means Allah is greater. But greater than what? So um, whenever a name is used for Allah, we always have an alif, al or alif lam or in english i would write it like this we have an al and then plus that name so for example if it was al plus akbar so right now we have here if it was al plus akbar it means we would have been al akbar it means the greater one the greater one so from this root, we don't have the word Al-Akbar in the Quran at all. However, the only thing we have in the Quran used for Allah from the root Kabara, Kabara is Al. Again, you see the Quran all the time. And we are going to look at those verses. It's Al plus Kabir. 
So al is al. I'm writing in English if you don't know Arabic, some of you. And then kabir. It means, uh, so this is, this is how you write it, kabir. So basically what it means is that al kabir or the great one. Allah is al. So Allah says huval kabirul muta'al. He's al kabir al muta'al. The great uh, most high. So basically, so that is the only thing that is used. So whenever a name is used for Allah, you have you have you add an al to it. But Akbar alone, if you use Akbar alone, Akbar alone is a name or a title. So Akbar alone is a name or a title unless you bring it in a sentence and you say something is greater than another specific thing. But if you use Akbar alone, it is just a name. It's a name or a title of a creature uh, as, uh, uh, as used in Allahu Akbar. So you, it, it, it has that kind of a connotation. And we're going to dissect this. We are going to go through all the verses of Quran and I'm going to show this to you. Actually, Quran clarifies this for us. It's in the Quran. So let me give you an example. For example, what is the meaning of Muhammad? Muhammad is the name of our Prophet, right? Prophet Muhammad. So what is the meaning of the name of Muhammad? The meaning of the name Muhammad means praiseworthy or delightful. That's the meaning of Muhammad, praiseworthy or delightful. Now, I have a question for you. Is Allah praiseworthy or not? I am hoping if God, I mean, regardless of what religion you believe in, is God praiseworthy or not? Allah means God. So that's what Allah means. Allah means in Arabic means God. So if God praiseworthy or not? Sure, God is praiseworthy. So can we say Allah Muhammad? It would be God is Muhammad. Can we say that? Muhammad sure has a meaning and a good meaning, but should we say that? Allah Muhammad. Just like no, we can't because Muhammad is a name of a person. The same with Ahmad. And what does Ahmad mean? Ahmad means more praise, even more praise. So someone is praiseworthy and someone else is even more praiseworthy. So this person is more praiseworthy. It's just like Akbar. You see, so Ahmad is the exact root of Akbar. Exact, I'm sorry, uh, wazna. They call it the wazna. So basically, all of them are on afal. Afal. So, so they, Akbar comes from the root of kabura. And then, if when you put it on the wazn of afal, it becomes akbar. Ahmad is from the root hamada or praising. So when you put it under the wazan or afal, it becomes Ahmad. So Akbar and Ahmad are the exact same thing. So I want to ask you, Ahmad is literally the same thing as Akbar. The only difference is that Ahmad is from the root Hamada and Akbar is from the root Kabura. It's the exact same thing, brothers and sisters, whatever religion, whatever sect, your traditional Muslim, Quranian, Christian, Jews, whatever. Is Akbar and Ahmad the same thing or not? Just the meaning is different. What is Ahmad? Yubashirukum, Quran, there is a verse. Yubashirukum be Rasulin. Yati Membadi, Esmuhu, his name is Ahmad. So Ahmad is a name. Now, Akbar is the exact same thing, even though, even though it's a different root, it's the same thing, Akbar. So my question is, can we say, so Ahmad means more, more praiseworthy, more delightful. Can we say Allahu Ahmad? It means Allah is Ahmad. It means Ahmad is Allah. That's what it means. It means Ahmad is Allah. Can we say that? I am really hoping and praying that you can say no. But... But let's jump into the Quran. I want to show you this because Quran actually, remember, I have said it in my previous videos, Allah knows the future from millions, thousands of years. I don't know the numbers from before he even created the world. Allah has heard it. When Allah revealed the Quran to Prophet Muhammad, Allah knew the future. Quran is for a future generation, for a coming generation that comes in the future. Allah knew what is going to happen. But Allah puts the clues in the Quran for those who think. And Allah teaches whoever he wants. But it is time for us to understand this. So uh, 
let's go and look at some of the Quranic verses together and we'll discuss more. Okay, as I mentioned, Akbar means when you use when something is something is bigger than something else. So please keep that in mind. I'm not going to go through each and every word, verse. Please look at it yourself, but I'm going to very quickly go go through some of them. So Akbar so Musa faqat sa'alu Musa Akbar men as I told you it's used always with men. They ask Moses greater than that. La asghara min zalika wa la akbar. There is nothing bigger and there is nothing there's nothing smaller and there's nothing bigger. Again, it's talking about what uh, that nothing is kept hidden from Allah. اخراج اهله منها اکبر و این دزالک so الفتنه تو or for example فتنه uh, is bigger کبر uh, اکبر و من القتل from, uh, from uh, killing so you can just go over and see all of them and ما تخفیفی صدور هم اکبر and you can see and there's this verse that we are I'm gonna this is a very important verse we are gonna discuss that together um, uh, uh, we are gonna. I'm gonna highlight this, and we're gonna come back to to it right after this. But let me just share this with you. Redwanu min Allah Akbar, and uh, and this one part that it has been used that is very interesting in the same uh, almost similar uh, structure. It says Inna thalata tanha an al fahsha wal munkar. Basically, the salah keeps you from doing bad things. Fahsha wal munkar. Then right after I said, وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرِ So, remember, this is not talking about Allah. It's just remembrance of Allah. It never talks about Allah. It's the remembrance of Allah is Akbar. It's greater. Greater than what? Greater than Salah. As you can see, there is a very clear comparison. It's always used to compare two things together. And... Uh, Again, all of these verses that you can actually read on your own. Uh, or there's another one, Manurihim and Ayatan. We don't show them any signs except that it is bigger than its similar sign. So, or La Azabul Akhirat Akbar, it says, Kadalik al Adab, the punishment of this world is like this, but the punishment of the hereafter is even bigger. Fayu Adabu Allah al Adab al Akbar. So, the great punishment again is used, used as the akbar with alif lam here al akbar so great punishment al fada ul akbar yawm al hajj al akbar so al adab it never in the quran and again i don't want to take uh, too much time you can do a little bit of research it's never in the quran it is used directly for allah it's used for his punishment it's used for his reward it is used uh, for various purposes for a day um, to describe that is greater than other days, but it's always used for things, and it's always used to compare one thing to another and say this thing is greater than something else. So I just want you to keep that in mind. However, from the same root, something is used for Allah, and that is, as I mentioned, is kabir. It's from the same root of kabira, but it is kabir. So, for example. Uh, uh, it says knower of the seen and the unseen al kabirul muta'al it means the great one al kabir whenever it is used for name for allah any name anything is used for allah you always put an al in front of it a l or a l al al because allah you you, are, you want to make that unique that is not every there are, there are things that are big but we are talking about here we are talking about Allah, so it becomes Al Kabir. It means the great one, the great one. Al Allah, which, which becomes Allah, which becomes the God. We are not talking about every. There are so many things that people are worshiping as God, but we are talking about the God, Allah. Here is we are talking about the great one, Al Kabir. Again, you see the same thing. Well, Al Aliyul Kabir. So. This is how names are used for Allah. Al Kabir again. Again, Al Kabir. So, so I just wanted you to see that as well. Now, we are going to look back at one verse that I mentioned. I really want you to see, read, and understand this verse. Okay, this is verse number 78 
of chapter 6 in the Quran. It's a very important verse. Please read this verse. This is when Abraham was arguing or trying to convince the idol worshippers, associators. Idol worshipper is a wrong thing. Anyone, associators, associated worshipping and worshipped other things beside Allah. So he looked at this moon, and when moon uh, set, he said, okay, this moon set, so I don't like the things that set. And then he waited until sun came up. It says, uh, and when he saw the sun, Shams, writhing, what did Abraham say? Abraham said, Hadha Rabbi, said, this is my Lord. What is my Lord? Shams, or the sun. Abraham said, this is my Lord. Basically, son is my Lord. Hazar Rabbi. This is my son. son. Son is my Lord. We are not talking about, we are talking about son, right? And also remember, we are not talking about S-O-N. That's another thing. That always these two are interchangeably in Christianity are used. So son, son. So just be careful. We are talking, this is a very deep concept. I'm just going to touch the, this is an ancient concept. So I just want to, I'm not going to go that deep. You can do research more about it more. But uh, it says, this is my Lord. What is my Lord? The Son. Then it says, Hava Akbar. This is what? This is Akbar. And then it says, Falam, when the Son said, He said, O people, indeed, I am free from what you associate with Allah. Indeed, I am free from what you associate with Allah. So what were they associating with Allah? They were associating the sun. Or so what or Akbar, which is the title of this. Of course, it means here Abraham is using it for, for the sun to say that sun is bigger than the moon so just i just I, this just bigger than the moon but it's the all is used here it's it's used here because it's very very important because it akbar is referring to the shams is actually in the quran we say it says this is my lord this is akbar so akbar is the title of the shams or the sun something that was bigger than the moon and people were worshiping it Okay, and then after after that, Abraham says that. Um, let me just fix this. Yeah. Abraham says that uh, I have turned my face towards He who created the heavens and the earth, Hanifa, basically purely, and I'm not of those wa anaminal mushrikin of those who associate with Allah. So, as you saw, as I mentioned, as you see in the verse, so. There was the Shams, there was the sun. Shams was introduced as Akbar in the Quran. How was it introduced? Abraham said, this is my Lord. What is my Lord? Akbar. Or as Shams. So here, Akbar is the title of the Shams. So this is my Lord. This is Akbar. Or this is greater. So the greater, the greater of the Quran that is specifically used is used for Shams. Now, when we say Allahu Akbar, if we had said Allahu Akbar, Al Akbar, it would have been the greater one. It would actually make sense. But Akbar as it's used is just a name. So that's the question. What is Akbar? What is Akbar? Akbar, as I, you can see from this verse in the Quran, Allah has put it in the Quran because Allah knows the future. Remember, Allah knows the future. Allah knows what happens. That's why you never in the Quran has used this word for himself. He has used it, he has put in the Quran from the tongue, from the mouth of Prophet Abraham, used for the son that was being worshipped. And Allah has denounced it. So Akbar is what? Akbar is the false god that Abraham denounced and rejected. 
I know this is heavy, but do research. You're going to see that Akbar is the false god that Abraham denounced and rejected. And every day, a traditional Muslim stands to say prayer. How do they start their prayer? Allahu Akbar. It means Allah is Akbar. Satan is making mockery of us. Satan used, picked the word Akbar from the Quran, put it in the beginning of Salah. Satan is basically saying to God, look, they are worshipping Akbar. These are you who revealed the Quran. I misled them. So at some point during after the Prophet, during the civil war, I don't know, I was not there, I didn't see it. I, I, but at some point, people disbelieved. Knowingly or unknowingly, I don't say they are doing it on purpose. Majority of people don't know it. I used to belong, I used to be one of these people. I still have family members who do that. They just don't know. We have to wake them up. We have to wake them up from worshipping Akbar. My brothers, my sisters, do whatever you can to wake your families up and to help them so that they don't worship Akbar. Akbar is not Allah. Allah is not Akbar. Whoever Akbar is, Akbar is the type, I, I personally, I told you this is my personal, I, this is used in the Quran for sun. And you can do a little bit of research. They use the sun, S-U-N, as S-O-N. So there's, there's, they believe there's a connotation with it. So I believe Akbar is the title of Lucifer. Lucifer means that in, in English, if you look at it, uh, it, 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 if you read the Torah, there's a part that is describing Satan. It's like, oh, great star, shining star. You were the shining star, but you fell. So Lucifer or Satan is the, that shining star like sun. So Akbar is the devil, is the title of Iblis. I repeat that Akbar is the title of Iblis, is, the, is that sun. And that's why Abraham is, Allah has put it in the Quran, right in, in that verse that I shared with you. When Abraham says, Hadha Rabbi, this is my Lord, this is Akbar. In, in reference to that great star of the heaven, in reference to the sun. And, uh, and then this was put in Islam as Allahu Akbar, which means Allah is Akbar. So whenever they stand to say prayer, they're saying Allah is Akbar. And then the rest of the prayer is for, for who? For Akbar. It's not for Allah. You're, it's like as if you would have said Allah Ahmad. Allah is Ahmad. Is Allah is not Ahmad. My brothers and sisters, Allah is not Akbar. Allah is the gracious. Al-Rahman. The merciful. Al-Rahim. The wise. Al-Hakim. The all-knowing. Al-Alim. The mighty. Al-Aziz. The great. Al-Kabir. The most high. Al-Ali. But Allah is not Akbar. This is really, really important. I want to share something else with you very quickly. So as I mentioned, the only name Allah uses him for himself from the root of Kabura is Al-Kabir. I shared that with you. So Akbar used, just this is a quick summary, is used for comparison purposes, but never for Allah in the Quran is used for the remembrance of Allah, but never for Allah. Akbar is used to compare two known things. And Akbar is used for false god. In the Quran, Akbar is used for a false god, for a shams, or the, the sun, S-U-N. So, Haza Rabbi, Haza Akbar. This is my Lord. This is Akbar. Obviously, it means greater, but is used in that reference. But Akbar is also a name and a title. Just like Ahmad is. Look, Akbar is on the same awazan as Ahmad. They are both from Af'al. I did mention that. I want to mention that again. Ahmad is a beautiful name. It is more praiseworthy. Isn't Allah more praiseworthy than anything else? 
Isn't Allah more praiseworthy than anything else? So should I say Allah? I'm sorry, let me just clean. I didn't write it nicely, so I want to write it nicely. So is, can we say Allah Ahmad? Would you say that? It means, and I could, you could justify it. Say, yeah, Allah is more praiseworthy than anyone else. So why would I say Allah is the great, the, pra- the more praiseworthy? Allah is the more, the, the more delightful one. Can you say that? My, tri- my, my, those of you who say Allahu Akbar, can, why don't you say Allahu Ahmad? Because if I say that, you will tell me that Mahdi, you say, this is Kalimatul Kufr. This is the word of Kufr. You are, you, this is Kufr. Don't say that. Because Allah is not Ahmad. Ahmad is the name of a person. Can I say Allah Muhammad? Doesn't Muhammad means praiseworthy, delightful? So if I say Allah Muhammad, have I said anything wrong? You would tell me, Mahdi, don't say that. That is kufr. You would tell me this, that's the name of a person. The same with Ahmad. Ahmad is right, exact same wazn of Akbar. For those of you who understand Arabic grammar, Akbar, Ahmad, A'alam, these are all on the same wazn. So, but you would be if I said Allahu Ahmad or Allahu Muhammad, probably in Islamic countries they would stone you to death. But when I say Allahu Akbar, you don't do that. This is the same. This is kufr. You are saying Allah is Akbar. Who is Akbar that you are worshipping? Who is this God, Akbar, that you are worshipping? That you are associating with Allah? You are cancelling all your rewards, your prayers for Him. Stand in prayer, you say Allah is Akbar. And you, the rest of your prayer is for Akbar. It's not for Allah. It's not for Al-Kabir. It's for Akbar. You go kill someone, you say Allah Akbar. This is the God of violence. This is the God of murder. This is Akbar is the God of violence. Akbar is the God of murder. Akbar is the God of oppression. God of beheading. God of cutting hands. God of killing. It's the enemy of the true God. Allah is the enemy of Al-Alim Al-Hakim. My brothers, my sisters, do not worship. Akbar. Akbar is not the true God. Wake up your families. They don't know. They don't do it on purpose. And Allah knows they don't do it on purpose. They're just following the religion of their fathers. They, what does Quran says? It says, but we found our fathers on a religion and we are just following them blindly. So that's exactly the same thing that's happened in Islam. They're just following the religion of their fathers blindly. And they think they're on the right path. They're worshipping Akbar. The false god. That is actually used in the Quran. Allah tells us who Akbar is. Akbar is used for Shams, for the sun. S-U-N. And the sun, or the luminous, the shining star is the title of Satan. Lucifer. For those of you who are Christian. For those of you who are Jews. People of the book, you always see this violence from these groups that they kill in the name of God and they say, Allahu Akbar. This is not the God of Quran. This is not the God of Islam. Akbar is the devil. Unknowingly, these people are worshipping the devil. They just don't know it. Don't judge. Don't judge Quran. Don't judge the true religion of Islam by what these people do. They are worshipping the devil unknowingly. Their calendar is different. Their salah is different. Their fasting is different. Their qibla, their mecca is different. This is a different religion. This is the religion of Satan. Everything is different. We are talking about two very different religions, my brothers and sisters. Please ask me any questions you have. I will gladly answer. But I beseech you, for your sake, for the sake of your hereafter, my brothers and sisters. I don't care. I know some of you after watching these videos are going to unsubscribe. They're going to hate what I say. That's, that's fine. But what is not fine if, is that you're canceling your rewards by worshipping Akbar. Do not worship Akbar. Worship Allah. Wake up. Please wake up. 
I don't know what else I can do except for posting these videos. But if you think about this, if you understand this, you have a duty. You have a duty to wake up those around you. Wake them up from worshipping Akbar. Don't let your families, your brothers and sisters continue worshipping Akbar. Akbar is not Allah. Allah is not Akbar. Allah is not Akbar. Never use this kalamatul kufr, Allahu Akbar. Allah is not Akbar. May Allah forgive me for using this. Allah is not Akbar. Allah is Al-Kabir, Al-Muta'al, Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim. But Allah is not Akbar. Peace and blessings to all of you.